Hey, Jody here with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. In this video, we're welding up a keyway on a shaft, a stainless steel shaft. Keyway is a fairly common repair. Sometimes it's due to the keyway being worn out from chatter. Sometimes it's just mismachined, it's oversized, whatever. But anyway, it's, it's a very common repair, and that's what today's video is about. The first thing, get it clean. Usually stainless steel only requires a little wipe down with acetone and not much else, but you want to make sure there's no tape residue or anything like that. I set a machine on 150 using a foot pedal. Sometimes I was at 150, other times I was much less than that. First thing I did was a burn down pass without filler metal, and I just used just a slight amount of the shoulder and that wound up taking only 117 amps. Just using the slightest amount of the shoulder for filler metal rolling along pretty quickly. That little arc strike there was just, just to test the location of the camera, by the way. But rolling along pretty quickly. This doesn't put that much heat into a part. And it's just a really easy way to make sure there are no voids down in the corner. It's not something that can be done on every single material, but this is 300 series stainless steel and has always worked for me. So I'll do that all the way around and let it cool. And I'm going to let it cool all the way to under 250 Fahrenheit before I come back with filler metal. And I'm going to lay a pass right down the middle with filler metal at the full 150 amps. For the most part, a lot of this I left the wire in the puddle just using a lay wire technique. And occasionally the wire would come out of the puddle or I'd slip and then I'd, I'd shift on in to just dip and pause. It doesn't matter. It's going to be machined off. But for the most part... For the most part, it just seemed to work really well just to leave the wire in the puddle. And here I'm just watching very closely the edge, the bottom edge of that bead to make sure I don't get into the base metal too much and just barely take it up to the edge of where I melted off doing the burn down pass. I don't want to make this repair any wider than it needs to be. Tapering off amperage on every, every bead so I won't leave a crater hole and letting it cool quite often. I'm using 332nd electrode, 332nd wire. That's 2.4 millimeter electrode and wire. And for this particular repair, I, I think I'm using 309L filler wire. And mainly that's just because I had what, on, what, what I had on hand and uh, because this is a scrap part, it's not going to be put into service anyway. So I knew it would, it would uh, weld just fine. Now I'm not going to show every single bead on here. I think you get the idea. So I've got the keyway filled up almost there. I've got a little low area. And I'm going to give you another look, another perspective of the bead going away from you here. And this is real time. This is about the, the travel speed for the most part that I used. Not, not extremely slow, not extremely fast. Just getting, getting in a good groove. Usually pushing just a little bit of rod in because my objective here is to build up. So I don't want to just barely dab rod. When you're doing repairs like this, there's always going to be those, those little ridges between beads. And you kind of wonder sometimes, will that be enough to machine off and not leave any kind of a trace of that there was a weld here, any kind of a pit or a void where it just didn't have enough metal to machine off? And in those cases, I think it's always best practice just to add a little bit more without getting crazy and, and, and making a lot of extra work but it's you know in, in the case in my case I'm usually taking this to a machine shop or they're coming and picking it up and if it doesn't clean up if it doesn't machine off clean then I've got to do touch-ups on it and they've got to uh, machine it again and it just makes a little it makes more sense to have a little extra metal to make sure that it that there's enough to machine off so rule of thumb is when you think you've got enough put a little bit more there's some little low areas right here that will need to be touched up and I won't show you the actual welding there because there's not much to it. So I just touch those areas up. Anything that looks low, I put a little weld on. And then, as is often the case, when you fill up a keyway, you just have to go all the way around the shaft to compensate for any distortion. Oftentimes there's a little wear where the keyway is also. So in this case, I, I just thought it would make for a more interesting video to build up the entire shaft. Once again, tapering off, trying to fill everything up and taper off nice and slowly, not to leave any, any fish eyes. 
Always use a stainless steel wire brush on stainless steel and don't use one that's been used on anything else. You can get little iron particles on the surface and then all it takes is a little moisture and you've got rust setting up on stainless steel. You notice the long stick out I'm using here. That's mainly for the purpose of just filming this. It makes it really easier for me to film with a long stick out and using that Furic number 12 cup there. A long stick out is not a problem and you still get really good shielding. And the good thing is it doesn't really require any more gas than a number 8 gas lens. Now I'm about to burn my torch here. I caught this on camera so I thought I'd just show you. Be careful where your torch is. Just about ruined it. Now, a point that I'd like to make here is building up a shaft like that is really not much different than doing a pad of beads that oftentimes you're asked to do in welding school or when you're in welding training. And some people just teach themselves how to weld like this just with padding beads on a little block of metal. It is a really good exercise and a really good way to build skill. And it translates into a shaft repair like this really well. There's just not much difference in running bead halfway over top of the previous bead on a, on a shaft than there is doing it on a flat piece of plate. Hardly any difference at all and some of the best practice that you can get. So in, if you're in welding school doing this, don't think it's boring or monotonous. Just get the most out of it. This is a pad of beads that my friend Roy Crumrine welded. We're working on some training videos together. And because this was a video about TIG welding stainless steel, there is something that goes on called carbide precipitation. If you'd like, stay tuned for my explanation on what that is. I was watching a video just the other day uh, of a guy welding stainless steel pipe, and in between passes he would mist it down with a, uh, a spray bottle of, of water, and he caught a lot of criticism for it. But I'll tell you, I've worked nuclear fab shops before. That was standard practice, and the reason is that stainless steel, 300 series stainless steel, 304 is the most commonly welded, but 304, 316, all that stuff will not harden by being speed cooled. Now it doesn't mean that other things can't happen like uneven cooling and une uneven uh, thermal shock and things like that, but it will not harden. You can heat it up cherry red, drop, drop it in a bucket of ice water, and it will not harden. It's just not set up to do that because of the chromium and nickel in it. But what does happen that's detrimental on 300 series stainless steels is something called carbide precipitation. Simply put, what happens is this. Carbon has an affinity for chromium. And when they're heated up to certain elevated temperatures, like between 900 and 1600, say, they, they start to migrate toward one another. They have an affinity for one another. They, they, they start to migrate toward one another and if they combine to form chromium carbide then what happens is that depletes the area from chromium and chromium is where you get your corrosion resistance so now you have chromium depleted areas and so intergranular corrosion starts to take place and that's where you get stress corrosion cracking basically it's like the metal gets termites you can do a dye penetrant check on stainless steel that is suffering from stress corrosion cracking and there'll be little spider cracks all over the place because the grain boundaries is where the, all, all that stuff happens and it's like mortar in bricks those are like grain boundaries and if those were imagine if uh, termites could eat mortar imagine that all the mortar is kind of like compromised it wouldn't be a very strong wall would it so that's the problem with 300 series stainless steel it's carbide precipitation and that happens from keeping stainless steel 300 series stainless steel at an elevated temperature for too long a time that's the reason for the guy misting the water on there is to keep the temperature down keep the interpass temperature down so that as he's welding he is not holding that heat affected zone in an elevated temperature state over a long period of time well, hey, thanks for your time. Thanks for watching. Click the subscribe button. Hit the like thumbs up thing if you like what you see here. We'll see you next time.